Welcome, welcome to Enlighten, where we talk about creative consecration through Christ. And we study the scriptures through art. Today we're going to be talking about this piece. I cannot wait to share more with you about this. It is going to be so fun. How's everyone doing? I hope you're having a, a beautiful day today. And um, I am so excited to talk about some of my favorite things in the whole wide world, about light and Jesus. And thank you everyone for taking the time. I love this community. Thank you for taking the time to be here and to share your comments and to share your goodness and your light. It just, I seriously cannot wait. I look forward to this all week long and I'm so excited. It's just like a pause for all the craziness going on and it's just so fun, so fun. We can gather together here on Enlighten and, and testify of Jesus with our light. And it's so much fun. I am so excited to um, have my friends too join me today. We have two wonderful women which will join us and that's going to be so much fun. And uh, let me see if I can actually grab them. Looks like they are on. So we can testify of Jesus, right? <laughs> That's like what Elder Bednar said. He was invented so he can have these ways to share the light of Christ. So, so much fun. Yes, it works. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Good to see you. Good morning. <laughs> Good to Good morning. see you. This is so great. I was just telling everyone, I'm so happy we have this time to talk about Jesus, you know, and, and share our thoughts and um, truly what joy in this day and age that we can do this. You guys are in Utah, I'm in Boston, and we get to talk to everyone that's watching, wherever they're watching from. It's just amazing. <laughs> so fun. I agree. I love talking about Jesus. Yes. And I'm so glad, Eva, that you finally get to kind of meet Abby. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm super excited, you guys, because this this is Abby. Okay, I have to show everyone. This is Abby right here. <laughs> she was my model for this artwork, and her companion, or friend, correct me here. Yeah, it was my friend. <laughs> okay, your friend that like was modeled to be a companion. So so much yeah. fun. I love I love that we get to talk about um, this piece that you help create because it's it's our piece now you know <laughs> well and it's beautiful you did such an amazing job oh it's it's how we father it's all here <laughs> tell you it's just so and you helped so much i seriously am so grateful i love that i love that you're on bikes because that shows movement like moving spirit i love the whole idea of spiritual momentum so this this is a good reminder to me that we must move we must move to keep that light going. So I love that that you are actually on bikes in this piece. But before we jump in, please tell everyone about you guys. Do a little intro. <laughs> Get to know you. On yeah. <laughs> well, I mine is simple, Eva. You know, I we've done this once before, but um, I am a mother of four, and I'm recently an empty nester. Our youngest. Um, graduated last year and has been in school and so I'm kind of learning this new dynamic of empty nesting and it's it's hard and then there's awesome things about it and then it's hard and, and learning to be a parent of adult kids is a little bit different not bad just different <laughs> you don't have as much control um, but that's what I do and I just I have great friends that I get to spend a lot of time with now that we're kind of in a different stage of life. And I'm kind of figuring out that that act too. And I find that there's a lot of women in my situation that are like, yeah, I'm kind of not sure because I was a mom for, you know, full-time mom for 25 years and I'm semi-retired is what I say, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. I'll be calling you in like two weeks. My kids are both going to BYU. Oh. And I'm my mission. I'll be like, okay. oh my gosh, Jen, help. <laughs> oh. Oh, truly. How about you, Abby? Yeah, so I am Abby. I am 21. I am down going to school at BYU, and I am hoping to major in dietetics and become a dietitian. 
I am working at the MTC right now and just hanging out, <laughs> doing what 21 year olds do. Oh, that's so great. We need, I love the dietitian part. I think it's so important to realize what we put into our bodies. I'm very passionate about food and that God gives us food. And I feel like the way you eat helps you feel better or worse, depending on what you choose to put in your tummy. So I agree so much. We need, we need people like you to, to educate us and to help this world. So that's so awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Such a great major. I wanted to share real quick because I had a few people that asked me because you know, like I love to mark my scriptures almost too much that I can't even read what I wrote after. <laughs> I have some like that. <laughs> I'm just like ah, oh. but people have asked like, what do you use? So I just wanted to show and share on here. These are called mild liners. Just like before we jump in. Um, and no one's paying me for this. This is not paid advertisement. I, <laughs> I just wanted to share because they don't leak through. And I use these with my seminary kids. I bought them for them and they love them. So oh. they, they don't leak through the page. So mild liners. And then I, you love to use uh, just a regular big pen to underline in the scriptures. And then I have this, um, it's just an electrical pencil when I can write more in the margins in the scriptures. So that kind of helps a um, few little things about. So where do you get the markers at? Are they just at stores or Amazon or? I have them on Amazon, oh. you know, um, but I, I'm sure, I think someone said, one of the missionaries told me he got them at Walmart. So yeah. they, they're not that expensive, honestly. Yeah. They're great. I just, I love the colors. Sometimes they have like 200 of like, I don't know. They have like so many different choices. <laughs> You can go wild, you know. <laughs> That's a great idea, though. I'm glad you shared that. Yeah. Yeah, it just was something I was like, okay, I'll just say it, you know, so it, it's easier. So, you guys, we have so much, so much wonderful things, so many, so many wonderful things to talk about. So, I was thinking maybe um, you can share a little bit about your mission, Abby, whatever you want, however you want to take it, actually. What... It's totally up to you. I just love that we get to talk about you and missions, full-time missions and life missions, right? Because that, that's what we're talking about today. So that would be really fun. Okay. Hey, awesome. Yeah. So I didn't even include this when I was introducing myself, <laughs> but I served my mission in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I loved it. I loved my companions and all of the friends that I met there, and I just loved getting to serve on that part of the in that part of the United States. It was wonderful. And I feel like I really learned a lot about sharing obviously the Savior's light with others, but also the role of the Savior's light within my own life and kind of what that looks like and how I can continually be a disciple, whether I have a name tag or not. And so a little bit about my mission story. I was only able to serve for seven months and seven months into my mission, I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and had to come home. And so that was kind of a shocker. And it was something that I hadn't expected. And it was something that wasn't a part of my plan. And it was kind of scary and nerve wracking. And I think that the talk that we picked honestly fits so perfectly with this dynamic of finding that light and still sharing it amongst those trials and those hardships that we go through. And it was during that time when I had to abruptly leave my mission and coming home and dealing with something that I had never dealt with before, that I learned so much more about my Savior and truly about His light and why it's so important to me that I am sharing it with others. I think Elder Sandfield in his talk, he talks a lot about how we are given the choice as to whether or not, right, we choose to share this light and what we do when we go through hard experiences. And I think that these experiences are to help us grow and to learn more about Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father. I mean, our ultimate goal is to become more like Him. And in order to become like Him, right, He, he went through His own experiences and He has become divine. And I just think that is so beautiful that our experiences can shape us to become a light ourselves and to become divine just as he is so oh, that is so 
so beautiful. I love how you're saying, you know, all of our experiences, right? Like whether you're a full-time missionary, whether you came home and you're teaching an MTC, that's like being a missionary, just, you know, <laughs> like so amazing, like, and good job getting in. I know it's really hard to <laughs> have a job it, there. I know it's like it, better than else, so, but you're such a bright light, those blue eyes, like, Look, you're like literally a sunshine. I'm so happy to get to you know, Oh, thank you. <laughs> and if I can interject really quick. So when Abby was diagnosed, um, I received a phone call. It was a Friday. I know exactly where I was sitting. I know what time it was. And it was from her mission mom. And she basically just said, hey, I'm with Sister Mahonan in the ER. And I'm pretty sure she has type 1 diabetes. And I was like, what? Like our family has no history of type one diabetes at all. Mm -hmm. And I found myself packing my bags. I flew out to North Carolina and I, she, Sister Brown picked me up at the airport, took me right to the, you know, I flew all night. It was the worst flight ever. And um, she took me right to the airport and I, or the hospital. And I walk into this room and I see my daughter with these IVs and things in her. And she had a light about her. And I was just like, really? Because <laughs> I'm a mess as her mother. And she just, you know, she said something, and then we can get in this talk, but she said something that really struck me. She said, you know, mom, I think if I hadn't been on my mission, getting this diagnosis would have been a lot harder for me. But because I've been in this place of serving Heavenly Father and my whole life has just, or my whole seven months, have been serving others and drawing so much closer to him really her attitude from day one has been like okay like if this is my mountain this is my mountain and she really does i mean she's had moments where it's been hard but she really just has this light about her and it has just been as a mother so inspiring to watch you know sometimes we look at our kids i know you can agree eva and we are just in awe of them and the things that they teach us and so i'm just grateful to be her mom like she's my only daughter i have three boys and she is a light like she inspires me every day oh so. i love it is that what made you pick what you third nephi i love that that's so cute because that scripture goes so well with what you're talking it does about. i don't know i have been looking for a scripture and i i texted you and told you this on Sunday yeah. I'm sitting at a homecoming and as I'm going through I find this scripture and I'm like oh my word this is perfect and I send it to Eva and I'm like I think this is a scripture we should use and not 10 minutes into this elder giving his report he uses the same scripture and I think my mouth literally just hit the floor because I was like oh, that is the one but it's perfect it, it really is it's in third Nephi um, 18 verse 24 I'm just going to read it real quick because it goes so well with what you and Abby said. It says, therefore, hold up your light that it may shine into the world. And we know that. I mean, that, that's the same admonition Jesus gives to the apostles in the New Testament, right? Don't hide your light. Hold it up. And um, this very next line is like so dear to my heart. It just makes me cry. It's just so beautiful. Uh, because this is Jesus speaking, and he says, I am the light which ye shall hold up, that which ye have seen me do. I mean, behold, ye see that I have prayed unto the Father, and ye all have witnessed. But this, the fact that he says, I am the light which ye shall hold up, and that that's what Abby has. That's what all of us have. You know, we have that light in us that's, that's Jesus. It's part of him that's in us and i i just love that no one can take that away from us when that light when it's him they can try there's opposition out there but we have his light in us and i just i love that you said in any circumstance you can you ha you have the light you know maybe sometimes it diminishes but it's in us you know and and in the talk also that um elder stanfield was like saying we get to choose to use that light and to rely more on the savior to make that light brighter. And I think that's, that's like, even in the hardest, even in the thick of darkness, we get to choose that light. And I think Abby's example is so tender and dear that she chose, because you can easily get angry in that situation. You can easily get so angry and say, 
God, you're so me. I mean, you can go like literally so many things you can be sad about and, and frustrated with and blame it on God in that situation. But Abby chose the opposite, right? She chose, no, I, I'm going to learn and what a better place. Like think of that mentality. Like, no, I need more life right now. I need to rely on Jesus even more right now. And I, I want to be more like you, Abby. I love that. I, that's such a good <laughs> love it but it's such a good you're so nice you live you know like when it throws you lemons you make lemonade like it's just this wanting more um the light of christ that i think that's so so cute it makes me think of the um the name of this piece i named it ambassadors and ambassadors of light you know because i love i love paul's words that's what he calls the christians of the of the um church the early christian church right he calls them ambassadors of light it makes me think so much of um okay the scripture reference is 35 18 verse 24 because someone's asking on here but it makes me think so much of like the the u.s embassy you guys in bulgaria we had the u.s embassy and i i it was like holy ground every time i'd walk by it i'm like oh why can't i just walk in and become one of them <laughs> like i just love the embassy in bulgaria <laughs> You <laughs> Bulgaria. I was always like, wow, wow. And honestly, like th th they would come out sometimes, I would try to talk, you know, or they wouldn't talk to me, whatever the case, the situation was. That embassy that was established in Bulgaria um, was like light. It was hope for me. Every time I'd walk by there, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love, I just, I intentionally would walk by the US embassy because I just felt, felt happier just walking on the holy ground. Just the word being an ambassador um it, it goes with so much like you're representing mm -hmm. like you're representing the whole country we represent jesus and um i just i love that in in every moment of our lives right because christian means mini christ right i love that meaning of the word christian so we get to be like mini christ in in like whatever part of our life whatever we're doing um for him and um i just i love that idea that um we can do this we can continually seek his light and i love also um this part where elder stanfield said we must trust in the lord in order to develop spiritual strength within ourselves um i don't know if you have any thoughts on that but i i just love this idea that we have to do our part you know if, in order for him to give us strength Right. Well, and that's when he talks about choose light. And I think, you know, he, he, he's sharing an experience of going through a tunnel. Have you ever been in a place, Eva, where it's pitch black? Like I remember going into a cave with our kids when they were little and the, you know, there were lights as we went back and then the, the guide was like, okay, I'm going to turn the lights off. And as soon as we do, I want you to put your hand in front of your face. And I remember doing that and you can see nothing like it is the most, terrifying feeling actually to just be encircled in this darkness and then they let us kind of sit in that for a minute and then just the smallest light came on and it is amazing how the tiniest of lights can just just break that, that darkness and he talks about an experience of going through a tunnel like that but then he shares you know these are some things that i learned and the first one is that we choose how long and to what extent we want to be influenced by whatever it is, whether I think it's the world or darkness around us, because there is a lot of hard. There's a lot of disappointing. There's a lot of things that we have to try to navigate in life. And it's like, we have to choose where that's gonna, you know, how long we're gonna follow that. So I love that he's like, it's a choice. So we first need to just choose the light so that we can be the light, right? Yeah. I feel like something that I have learned so much about this past year is honestly just letting God prevail within my life and putting my faith in him and my trust in him. Because when you do that, you're allowing their light to come unto you and you are just able to share that with others, which I think is so cool. And we do go through all these hard experiences. And you mentioned, right, sometimes our light, maybe it gets smaller, it diminishes a little bit. And honestly, I think that there is nothing wrong with that because in those moments, it's what you do with it, right? Do you turn towards the Savior 
and do you turn towards those that you love and trust that can lift you up and bring that light to you? I think about my experience. I was not happy 24 yeah. seven, <laughs> right? It was hard and that's okay. But I learned so much more about relying on the savior and his light that it has made my love for him grow immensely. And it's made my love to share the gospel and to be that ambassador, whether I have a name tag or don't have a name tag on even more. And that's something I always share with my missionaries. We say prayers all the time to begin our meetings and to end our meetings. And I always include in there, I pray that we can exemplify Jesus Christ and share his light just as he did when he was on the earth. Because that's what we need in this world. We need light and whatever that looks like. And we all have something different to offer based on our own experiences. And I think it's cool that we can use that to a strength instead of a weakness. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so beautiful. Both Abby and Jen, this is amazing. It just builds up on, on that concept of life. I love these comments that go so well. Um, Raquel is saying, I feel like as disciple of Jesus Christ, we, we are commissioned to show the glow. Wow. That's really cool. I love this. And also as we show his glow, we can dispel the darkness and share the light of Jesus Christ. And I feel like that's so so essential like you said even a spark even a little bit of light can do that mm -hmm. i mean how amazing is that concept you know that we get to choose that i know i have on my i have a post-it note on my mirror in our bathroom upstairs and it says you know faith is not by chance it's by choice and i see it every time i brush my teeth you know that you have to constantly keep choosing that it's elder anderson i think that said that but i love i love that idea that we just must choose him and it made me think so much of the apostles, right? As you're talking about um, that, you know, we get to stand and, and be witnesses of him with whichever amount of light we have, we can do that. And I think it's so neat um, that there is a story when a Pharisee goes and wants to be um, one of the 12, right? He goes and talks to Jesus and he's like, well, I want to be one of the 12. And it made me think that like God chose them, every single one of them, they were called of God and he chose most unlikely people mm -hmm. to do the job, <laughs> you know, like ordinary people, like all of us is just with, with extraordinary mission, right. To be his um, apostles in the earth. And it just, it just made me think so much how we have callings, like our callings in the church, are a way to share that light because we all, every one of us, you know, is called of God in that same sense to go out and um, whether it's in our families, first and foremost, and then whether it's in our callings of church or in neighbors of the world, like anyone to be that, to be that light. It's just this concept that he has chosen us and he has called us and how, what a, what a tremendous, opportunity we have to share the good news right to share our knowledge of what we have because it is a dark world out there <laughs> it is you know in my house i have a a frame downstairs and it has this quote I, i'm sure you've heard it probably most everyone's heard it but it says live so that those who know you and don't know him will want to know him because they know you and I just think, you know, that to me also is the same thing with sharing our light. You know, when people notice it, there's something different about maybe the way that we live or how we handle a circumstance or um, just just the way that we generally live our lives. Because I, as a, I went on a mission and I can remember thinking, okay, there is not anybody who doesn't know who back then we were Mormons, right? <laughs> and I remember as soon as I got on the plane to fly to my mission, I, I served in Oakland, California at a visitor, at the visitor center at the temple. And the lady sitting next to me, I didn't have a companion. I was there with about five elders and I'm on the plane and this lady next to me <laughs> looks at my name tag and she goes, so what's this? And I thought, are you joking me right now? I don't even know what to tell her because <laughs> I was just so shocked. You know, and so, yeah, we don't always have that name tag on us that maybe spells out who we're a representative for, but in everything that we do, everything we do. And I love one thing um, that he says here. Let's see, where's it at? 
He just says, in our lives, the extended hand of the Savior may take the form of helping or of help from a trusted friend, leader, or loving parent. While we're struggling in the darkness, there is nothing wrong with relying temporarily upon the light of those who love us and have our best interests at heart. Because I think all of us at times, you know, you're right. Abby could have so easily been like, really? Like I'm on a mission for you and I get this disease that it's not just like a week long. We went home knowing nothing. It was the most scary thing on a plane. Like I, I'm like, what, what do you need to have to eat? And what do we do? And yeah. you know, but, but that's not the direction that Abby chose. She chose to say, you know what, if this is my mountain, I'm going to learn it. And that's what led her to choose dietetics, which is going to bless a lot of lives because she knows. And I just feel like if we will allow God to lead us, even in those dark times that we can't fully see, he is going to not only bless us, but really he's going to help us bless others because that's why we're here, right? We're here to bless others' lives. It's not all about us. Oh, yeah. it's so true. And I love when Abby was saying, let God prevail. Yes. Do you have a thought, Abby? Oh, no. I didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I love <laughs> love both of your thoughts that you shared and I kind of want to go back a little bit even when you were talking about um how we are like handpicked and you mentioned that we can become like extraordinary and you are speaking my language because that is what I share with missionaries all the time <laughs> and it's something that I think is so important in general for all of us to know I believe it's in Matthew 4 where Jesus Christ calls his disciples to become fishers of men and I always I love this story because that is what they did for their livelihood. For a living, they were literally fishing. And I'm like, if they were seen on the streets, nobody would probably stop and get an autograph with them or take their picture. But Jesus Christ, he saw something in them. And he called them to follow him and to go in to teach the gospel to others or to just be that light. And very similar sense, he is taking us as we are and he's helping us become something so much more extraordinary and to become that light that radiates to others. And it's okay sometimes if we need to rely on other people's light. Honestly, that allows them to serve us just as the Savior did. And it gives them that opportunity, which I think is so cool. And so I just loved everything that was shared because I'm like, this is something that I see and focus on every single day. So it was just really neat. I love that. I love that. You know, it's so cool that you share that with those darling missionaries. What a, what a wonderful job to inspire. I still have in my missionary set scriptures, I had the, the little tiny quads. They don't make them anymore, but mm -hmm. the tiny ones, you yeah. know, the little, wait, what? You had Jen too. Like the little, they're just smaller, the quad, but smaller. Who And we can't read them anymore because <laughs> we need readers. So. I know, right? <laughs> But like, I just love them. And I had opened up the, the I was just showing uh, my son who's home from BYU and I was showing him the front cover. And I, I had written something, my MTC teacher, John Penrod. I still remember his name. Mm. After, I don't know, almost 30 years. It's crazy what he taught me. And it says, you can't light a fire if you don't light it within you. I mean, I, I think it's close enough to what exactly actually says, but that's what he was trying to do is, you know, you have to have the fire inside of you, the love, the love for Jesus, the light to share, um, which I think it's so amazing. That's so, those words you share with those missionaries really matter. Like, I seriously to this day remember his words. <laughs> it's just such a, again, and it's about light, which I, is my favorite thing to ponder because we know everything is light. Every, every object has light inside of it. And it's just such an incredible concept you know what made me think this earlier this week i was studying about phoebe you guys so i really wanted to share this story about phoebe um she i actually knew of phoebe one of the missionaries that taught me in bulgaria 32 years ago his daughter was phoebe and i loved her name and we were like uh, pen pals so she would write me all of the beautiful letters that come from america with a stamp that said usa on it <laughs> Like, I treasured those envelopes so very much. And, like, it was all in English, and I'm still learning English. And so, to me, she was like an ambassador of light in my own life. So, I loved her cute name, Phoebe. 
And those letters that we wrote to each other, I always looked in the mail, I couldn't wait to hear from her. Um, but I love about Phoebe also, and maybe she's named after Phoebe in the New Testament. I don't know. <laughs> but I just thought that Phoebe, the story of Phoebe, it's in um, Romans 16. And it's only two verses that we hear about Phoebe. Um, but what powerful two verses are, because she was literally an ambassador. She was a, a missionary in her own sense of helping the church so very much back then in that day and age. And I just wanted to share because it touched me so much. There's like two, two verses. Now I'll just read them. So again, we're in Romans 16 verses one and two. And there's three qualities that um, Paul is telling us about her, which I think are so, so fun to ponder. Some of her qualities that we can find ourselves in these qualities that he talks about her. Um, and it says, I commend unto you Phoebe, which by the way, the word Phoebe means bright and radiant. Oh, that, right? That's awesome. <laughs> it's such a cool name. I just, in Greek, it means bright or radiant. So I love this story. And he says, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at, um, I don't know really how to pronounce this, but Centura, I'm just totally <laughs> um, that ye receive her in the Lord as become a saint and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you for she had been a succorer of many and of myself also mm -hmm. and so uh, just the the qualities right she's a, a sister a servant and a succorer of many people in him and I they did a little bit of study about her and um, was trying to find out a little bit more about what do these words mean, a sister, a servant, and a succorer. I guess she she had um, assisted like the church in, in financial way, in spiritual way. She actually went out and helped establish the church in Spain in preparation for Paul to go there. Um, on, and he stops in Rome. I, he never makes it to Spain. But... It just made me think like she is like such a uh, an ambassador as well um, that she did that um, logistical base for the Spanish mission that she prepared and then talked to the government and and set things up makes me think of the Bulgaria I was in the midst of all this too because like in the church in Bulgaria it was so new we my father my dad was one of the first people that met with um, like Jeffrey R. Holland came and President Nelson, who actually founded our church in Bulgaria. And so he would go and talk and it was like literally establishing the church in Bulgaria was such an amazing baby part of that work. And I was thinking, you know, how do we translate this into our own lives? How do we, how are we a sister, a servant and a succorer in our own lives? How do we um, do that? And I looked up actually the word um, succorer um, and it means to run to support that also touched me so much so you, when you see need like she this baby was running to go and help someone whatever help they might have needed um, it says to help and relieve when in difficulty want or distress to aid and assist and um, it was just like such a sweet I mean we don't talk much about um, cute Phoebe, but it made me think that she, in her day and age, was that like ambassador as well of help establish the kingdom of God, help, and and that's us. We are doing the same. Whatever part of the world, whatever our our family, our congregation, you know, in that sense, we can. And even if we're just talking to someone at the grocery line or a question like you had, Jen, someone's asking you about the church. We're doing exactly that. We're a little bit of light here and there. We're just sharing that in, in all the things that we do. And it's just so, so, so sweet and amazing. To, um, just ponder that. Ponder being a sister, a servant, and a sucker of people. And it's just such an amazing, I don't know, it just, she really inspired me. That's awesome. <laughs> I really, I appreciate you sharing that. I was going to say, I love that you bring that up because I can honestly say I don't think I've, honestly like read her story or those two verses and been like okay like 
who is this? Which I think brings up a good point, right? There are spoken of and unspoken of ambassadors. And there are so many people all around the world that share their light and do so much good and you don't hear about them. And I just think it's really cool that no matter where you are in the world or what you're going through, right? There's always going to be that light that we can turn to. And those people, these stories that we can read about, I love that you pointed out these qualities and these attributes and Elder Stanfield, he points out some of these in his talk. And he says that the Savior's influence will bring us confidence, determination, comfort, and most important, the power to know that he lives. And I wrote right next to that, that the influence of light will provide those things. And I love that the very first one is confidence because we are always told, right? Our confidence comes from our Heavenly Father in Jesus Christ. We know that they have confidence in us to continue and get through this life and this journey, whether we're going through hardships or we have burdens or struggles. And when we realize that we have confidence from our Heavenly Father and our Savior, it gives us confidence to want to go out and bring that to others. Oh, that's so beautiful. And I mean, having that is such a gift, you know, and I think also parents can give that, that love from the parent can also give you that confidence because mm -hmm. we're doing God's work. It's all connected, mm -hmm. right? But I love, I love that, Abby, and I love that you you notice that, um, you know, we may be known ambassadors. There's a lot of known, wonderful known ambassadors, but some of us are just ordinary people that like. And I love, I love that you said that. The fact that I love that God sees us. You know, He sees our hearts. And that's, that's what matters. You know, that's the most beautiful way to know that he matters most to us, that um, whether the world sees, you know, we just leave our mark and see where that, those seeds will take root. But God sees our hearts. And I think that's um, an incredible thing that we, we matter most to him. And that recognition he gives all of us through revelation, through the Holy Ghost, um, and then having that spirit in us. Okay, didn't you just love, this part was so touching to me. I love how he talks about, he shares the scripture, draw near unto me and I, I will draw near into you, like the savior speaking, right? It's just so sweet. And then he says, seek me diligently and ye shall find me. Ask and ye shall receive, knock and it shall be open unto you. Um, and these are all such good admonition. In, in Bulgaria, we actually say, um, which means if you ask, you're going to get to the highest kingdom. That's kind of the literal translation, <laughs> which is, I don't know if it really makes sense in English, but my mom would always tell me this when I was a little kid. She's like, just ask, just ask. And then my husband has a hard time with directions. He would not ask for directions. <laughs> When we're like driving somewhere, it's like, no, I can figure it out. Don't ask anyone. <laughs> like, right? You know, I was like, just, just pull over. They'll know. You know, just, just ask someone. But um, it's just funny how like he, he's like, I can figure it out. But just that, just for directions, he does ask the Lord. Even for <laughs> it's just a funny thing, and it just made me think so much. Um, the the word first of all, how Jesus keeps telling us that. If we don't know something, ask, seek him diligently, right? I love that he's like, seek me diligently. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, he knows it. He, he's going to, he can help us figure it out. I love those admonitions. Like, they're so visual for me. They're just so real. Seek, ask, knock. And I love the word that he uses, which it says draw. I literally looked at up it has like 23 different meetings wow. of the word draw i mean you draw water you draw pictures you can draw a name out of a lottery i literally i seriously took like i wrote down so many so many different so many different meetings uh draw money out of a bank draw toward ending mm -hmm. um but the one i love this um also horses or oxes they can draw a cart you know, use that strength to draw the card. I mean, as an artist, I'm thinking of draw, right. <laughs> you know, that comes right. to my mind right away. But, and, and I thought about that verb, how in every one of those um, meanings of that word draw, there's effort. 
there's just effort that mm -hmm. like it's required um, to actually draw near to Jesus. We must put that effort. And, uh, and then I love that he says, and I will draw near into you. That, like he will put that effort, which is so dear, so dear. He's like, you, if you want me, I want you. I, I, I'm right there, you know, I will be your best friend. And the line after that touched my heart so much when um, Elder Stanfield says, and this is something that's so important and we so often like don't do. He says, we must act expecting mm -hmm. that the Lord will fulfill his promise and lift us from the darkness if we draw near into him. I mean, it's this, this, this element of faith and expecting. I love that. And that's what, I mean, Abby, you're such a good example of that. It's like you, you're drawing near to him even in that difficulty, even in that really hard moment when you didn't know how things are gonna turn out, you didn't know the A, B, and C's at the end at all, but you're putting this effort, and I just, I love expecting that the Lord will fulfill his promise to lift us from the darkness. Darkness, if we draw into him, it's just this acting, expecting that he's gonna do his part, knowing that he will, it's like, changes the whole picture, right? Like, it's just such a powerful admonition. Yeah. I love your emphasis on faith. And just so you know, my mom, <laughs> she has one of those limits on her phone for Instagram. I so forgot. it might cut off in a second, but we'll hop back on yeah. if it does. If it cuts us off, we'll hop back on. But I just, sorry, forgot about it. <laughs> but what I was going to say, I hope it doesn't cut me off. Everything that you were talking about, drawing closer, right? Putting in that effort. Um, it reminds me of the prophet Joseph Smith. And when he went and he prayed in the grove of trees and right before he was visited by God, the father and his son, Jesus Christ, he was engulfed in darkness and he was probably so scared and he could have turned away at that point and he could have been like, Hey, this is actually too much for me, but he didn't do that. Instead, he put in more effort to draw out and call upon heavenly father because he had the faith that he would help him and that he would receive an answer to this question that he had. And we can learn so much from his experience, but I just think it Okay, I think maybe. <laughs> okay, I can't hear you, but okay. I can, can, I can't hear you right now, but hopefully it will work. Can you hear us now? Yeah. Okay. okay. We love the time limit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but I just love it because it's such a great example of pushing through that dark. And I mean, obviously there was so much light after that. And my mom and I were talking a little bit about this picture, Ambassador of Light, last night. And she was just sharing thoughts about how it looks like you're riding into the darkness, but everything that is behind the sisters, right, that are represented is light and it's happy and it's places that they've touched. And you're going out to share that with others and you're going out to brighten their lives and bring them that light and that hope. And whether you're a missionary again or you are just, right, going through day-to-day -day life, you can do that as well and you can share that light. So. What a cool insight. I, I didn't do that intentionally, <laughs> so I love my favorite part when someone's like i actually see this in here I'm like yes thank you <laughs> art speaks to us individually right it's just so beautiful i think that's like the best the best um explanation about that so cool yeah because it is pretty dark in this area right here you could see like not knowing and i feel like that's life that's so much like our whole life journey we so much want to know I mean, even makes me think of Abraham. We're actually talking about Abraham next week um, on Enlightened. But I, he, he didn't know. He's like, God tells him, well, you're going to be a father of many nations. And, and he, he's like, what? Like, me? <laughs> like, he was like, are you serious? I mean, he was like, how is that going to happen? That, that was like his first question. like, how? And God doesn't tell him how. He's telling him, just trust me. I know how. Trust me. I 
God Almighty know how it's gonna work out. And oh my gosh, I mean, his whole life, like, was trying to figure it out. And I feel like we are trying to figure it out. And um, at least I am every day. I'm just like day by day. I just take it day by day <laughs> because you know it's just um, a lot happening and and choosing choosing Jesus like truly literally makes all the difference. You know, um, um, I love this one also quote that he said, there's no darkness so dense, so menacing, so difficult that it cannot be overcome by light. And um, we touched a little bit about that, you know, with the darkness that, that we've experienced. But I love the line where he says, um, we have the power to choose belief over doubt, um, which is pretty amazing. And that, that the story in the beginning, Abby, that you shared that you're gonna, you let God prevail, just like our prophet has been talking about, like letting God prevail. It goes so well with that, like trusting that he knows the bigger picture. I mean, right now you are educating people how he's literally using you as a tool you're learning how to continue to be that tool in people's lives in such long-term uh, significance, you know, of, of with your job, how you can, and just talking to your friends, any, anyone you come in contact with, the mission of your friends. And it's just such an amazing thing how God can really use our gifts. I mean, this is also in the story of Phoebe. Um, she, she could assist as a sister. She was a servant, which, I mean, we know Jesus loves that virtue being a servant he's telling us it's it's that that's his virtue he loves that you know and um it's just so amazing seeing how individually in our own lives and situations are those gifts that we can use to do exactly that to do his work and and he will use us he will use every little bit of desire that we have and ability to share in our own unique ways um with the world. I mean, it's just the most amazing commission that we have that someone mentioned earlier in the comments. Yeah. And I think, you know, like Abby said earlier, sometimes we might get two verses and sometimes we might not have any verses, right? <laughs> yeah. But he will use us in our own little corner of the world. And we live in this world where everybody, not everybody, but lots of people want to be influencers. And, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's like, you know, we also need those who are just okay to be like, I'm just going to do what I can in my neighborhood and in my ward and those around me. I wanted to, to share a thought also when you shared um, about the darkness being dense. Right after that, he shares a quote from Elder Anderson. And Elder Anderson gave this BYU devotional. And I'm actually reading it out of David Butler's book, um, Spirit. I don't know if you've read any of these books. I He's got one on... Okay, so he's got Almighty, Redeemer, and the Spirit. And this one, he uses the same quote, so I think we're supposed to share it. But he says, Elder Neil L. Anderson said recently to students at BYU, as evil increases in the world, there is a compensatory spiritual power for the righteous. As the world slides from its spiritual moorings, the Lord prepares the way for those who seek him offering them greater assurance, greater confirmation, and greater confidence in the spiritual directions they are traveling. And then this was the part that I loved. The gift of the Holy Ghost becomes a brighter light in the emerging twilight. Mm -hmm. And I actually went and listened to that talk, and I would encourage people to go listen to it. It's really, really good. He gave it in 2015, I think it was, but, but it's true. There's just that, you know, that, that light will get brighter and brighter. Yeah. yeah. I, it reminds me, I think sometimes we feel like, well, what do I have to offer or to share to others? Like, where does that light come from and what do I have? I love that you bring up gifts and talents and then how they can be magnified. It makes me think of Enoch and we learn about his story a little bit more in Moses chapter six. And he is like called to go out and to teach and to be a disciple and he does not feel qualified at all and he's like why would you pick me i have these weaknesses and the people are gonna mock me and they're not gonna listen and the lord is like put your trust in me have faith in me and then he answers him very specifically to his concerns 
and he's scared of speaking for one of them. And he's like, I will give you words. Your mouth is going to be filled and you will reach people. And I just think that that is so cool that the Lord is going to take our effort and he will magnify it. We just have to trust in him. And he does that because he sees the light within us and he wants us to be that ambassador and he wants us to share it. It's so powerful. It's cool. Oh, I love Enoch. I love him so much. That's like one of my favorite stories. I'm so glad you shared. <laughs> so glad you shared it. I actually was asked by the church. I, I just finished a commission piece on Enoch because we didn't have anything on Enoch. Wow. So it's going to be in the Come Follow Me manual in the Old Testament. And it's, I, I studied, I had to study him in depth because I'm like, how can I create something I don't know much about? So, I mean, I knew something about him. I was like, so this, I've been like, oh my goodness, and, and your mouth should be filled and, you know, all these promises. <laughs> and I'm like, and he couldn't, he thought people hate him. He literally says up front, he's like, me? People hate me. Yeah. Why are you choosing me? You know, but I love, I love his story. It is so inspiring to me and our children. I mean, I share, I love that. Um, the idea that he he takes the willing heart, mm -hmm. even though he feels inadequate, his heart was willing, right? Like he wanted to do God's work. He just didn't feel like he's qualified for it. Like he's good enough for it. And it's just so, I love that story. It's like one of my most beautiful, because it says after that, that he walked with God. That, that he didn't just once had that vision, but he continually kept walking with him just like Moses and we hear that walking with God idea quite a bit uh, what is such a strength you know but I love the Enoch story because he was young too a lad right he was a young kid and we know his whole city gets translated I mean he comes from like, <laughs> to like okay I'm just gonna go to heaven right now <laughs> this is yes. how greater God is he can if we have that willing heart, he can, he can move those mountains. Yeah. And that's literally an example of that. And we all have those mountains and we all have um, that feeling of like not good enough and not um, being there uh, comparing to others, but comparing, like thinking about God, then we find that strength. And that's my favorite thing. I was like, whatever I'm going to do next, is that pleasing to God? You know, and, and it just gives you this power. It, it just really gives you that power to, I have to share this real quick. I know time's almost running out, but this cute, I wrote, I did a post about this, but I never showed a little vase um, that this cute missionary did. And I was doing a fireside in Utah and they came, his family came and they brought this darling um, mm -hmm. project that the cute missionary did, Elder Cox. And um, I just loved it so much. And then his mom, looked at it and she said i'm sorry it's actually broken so you could oh. see <laughs> she said i'm really sorry this vase is broken it was his best thing he could ever do in his class it's his final high school project wow you could see on the oh. it's got a big crack too and and she's like i even told elder cox like i shouldn't give her a broken vase she won't like that he's like no 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 she will like that <laughs> <laughs> So I thought that was so cute because sometimes we, we feel like that. Like we can we can be broken, but look at it. Can you tell? You can't tell. It's like, it's such a beautiful vase to me. And, and the fact that it's broken and, and fixed up, it's even more precious in my sight because that's, that's like our lives. So let us not let these um, broken parts of us strive, stop us from sh sharing God's light and from shining him and and well diminish our power that is and, and often what we see with broken right the light actually comes through those broken pieces yes and so we can feel like we're broken or you know whatever the 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 term is that people choose to use but really that's how god's light gets there is because it helps us rely more on him if we choose that right it, it all comes down to that choice but if we can just look at ourselves and, you know, I may not feel like I have all of these qualities and gifts or whatever. And, um, but, but this little part of my life that God might influence me in, if I just will give into that, right. He will use us. I don't even know if that's making sense, yep. but he'll use us if we're just willing to step 
forward and just say, you know what, put me in. Like whatever it is, if it's taking meals to people, I can cook, I can do that. You know, whatever it is, because it really does make a difference to that person. And that's what life is about. I've, I really have said to my kids, life isn't about you. Yeah. It's about who you can touch and help along the way. You know, I have a, a, another saying in my house on a, a board that says, we're all just walking each other home. And we really are. And we I all just need that light from each other. And I, I want to say something really quick before we finish. Are you familiar with, you probably are, um, Chris Tomlin? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so his song, this song keeps going through my mind. So everybody's got to go look it up now. He's a Christian singer. He's one of my favorites, but he has a song called Be the Moon. Oh. And so I, I kind of looked up a little bit to see what it said about it. And I just want to read what he says about the song Be the Moon. He said, it's about reflecting the light of God and being in the right place. The song's idea is that the moon doesn't try to be anything, but instead reflects the sun's light. And then he said, we are all lights of the greater light. And I loved that. I just thought that's so good. And it's such a great song. It's one of my favorites. I wrote it down. I'll put it up on my story too. I'll, I'll tie it maybe to the scripture and I'll, I'll put it with the art. I'm going to put the art up and I'll put the, the song so people can. Okay, that's awesome. Oh, you guys, I love that we're all walking each other home. That's going to be one of the sparks today. I can feel that. That's such a good quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when I send the sparks later, I'm going to put that. I just love that so much. And I love, um, I love this comment, Peggy, saying we all need cracks for the Holy Ghost to enter and to teach us. Yes, we don't know it all, but he does. And oh my gosh, don't you just love that when we are being taught? I, I love that. You can just feel the spirit like telling you to do this or do that and oh it is such an amazing feeling being and sometimes you can't even describe that with words yeah um, how powerful and amazing it is to be in that moment where he can help you glorify him with your gifts and by helping others i love watching the olympics there's a cute girl sarah mclaughlin i don't know if you've seen any of her posts she but is adorable <laughs> she just a little shout out. So cute. I was like, wow. And she always like, all glory goes to God. Like, I was just like, I think she quoted Psalm 115 verse 1, where it says, God, it's all for your glory, whether it's a good outcome or a bad one. She's like, I just, I love that too. Yeah. Because so often yeah. we give the glory to God when it's a good outcome. But it's important to give all the glory to God when it's also not a good outcome. Because he is in the details and in the waiting and in those moments where are tough, you know, he is there and he's still working through us and in us. And um, wow, what beauty, what beauty, what, what light and, and thoughts on being ambassadors. Thank you so much for thank being you. Here. And you know what? Thank you for the picture. That's a whole other tender mercy that you don't even know about that, that I probably needed a lot during that really, really hard time. Cause this picture, was taken your process is interesting it took me quite a few catches to actually i'm actually the one that took the picture and then eva does all of her magic but um abby had only been home i think a couple of months when eva had reached out and asked me about doing a sister missionary picture and this is one of her really good friends that's not a return missionary just that did it with us but it's just a really tender picture for me and a reminder of of my daughter's light in in the face of a really hard situation you know she loved her mission more than anything and sometimes we can look at it and say wow she only got seven months and, and lost out on 11 months or we can look at it and say wow she got seven months and that's what god needed from her and he she is i said teaching at the mtc you are a missionary longer than anybody else <laughs> exactly. and now she just wears a white name tag and it's the best <laughs> Yes. Oh, I love that. And it's such a beautiful way to follow what Jesus says. I love that he says, I'm the light of the world. And he turns around and says, well, now you're the light of the world and you're carrying my light. So thank you. It was awesome talking about light this morning. Thank love you, Eva. Thank and everyone you on so here much. Joining us. Carpe diem. Have a most beautiful light field day. And thank you. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Love you guys. See ya. Bye. -bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye.